Hey guys, my name is Allison and welcome back to my channel. Alright, let's cut to the chase. Here's the tea. Poodles and Bashans and curly coated dogs seem like they are just like the top of the top. Like they're the hardest to do and nobody understands them. And yada 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 like when you're in grooming school you know like they're the heart like you're like oh my gosh i want to be able to do that one day you know what i mean so the reason that when you groom them and you think they're so hard a lot of the problem is because they're not prepped correctly so if you feel like you're struggling with your poodles and your bashans and even like your doodles that are like the super curly 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 coated doodles like pretty much your curly coated breeds and you're struggling with them, here's why. Prep work, okay? Two words, prep work. Your prep work sucks. The most important part of grooming a dog is the bath and dry and brush. And you're probably screwing something up without even realizing it. So let's just talk about it real quickly. When you bathe your curly coated dog, you do not want to use conditioner, okay? You do not want to weigh that coat down. You are trying to get it crisp, like as crisp as possible. One of my teachers would even use a terrier shampoo on their curly coated dogs, um, which is like for wire coated dogs, to try and get their coat so stiff. That way it, when you scissor it, it creates that beautiful finish. With that being said, you don't want to use even a shampoo that's too heavy. A lot of the time you want to, like, when you groom these dogs, you want to use, like, a clarifying shampoo, and that's it. So, like, if I go and groom my dog, right? My dog. It's right here. She's sleeping, but I can wake her up. She desperately needs a bath. Hi, baby. So, when I groom her for show, right? Or just even in the salon. If I groom her at all, I bathe her in um, Hydra Extreme two times. And then she gets a volumizing shampoo in her head. That's it, okay? There's no conditioner going on her body if I'm giving her a haircut, okay? So fast forward because obviously I don't give her a haircut every time I bathe her because I have to bathe this dog weekly. So when I give her just a regular maintenance bath, she gets conditioner. She gets a lot of conditioner. I condition her legs. I condition all the parts that have the most hair. So that's going to be her legs. Stand up. Her whole little crest here, her head some, her tail. Um, I don't worry too much about conditioning her body. It's actually pretty short. Um, but all of her longest parts of hair get conditioner when I just give her a maintenance bath, okay? When I'm grooming her, she gets Hydra Extreme. Um, some competitors will use Terrier Shampoo. They use, um, I've heard Velis, Velis, Velis is a new company. I don't think I'm saying that right, but, um, they actually have, it's called a clarifying shampoo and I haven't tried it yet. So I'm really excited to, I have a bottle of it and, um, I just haven't groomed her yet to test it out. So I'll keep y'all posted on that, but you are using the wrong products in the tub. That's like screw up number one. So no conditioner when you're giving them a haircut, only conditioner if they're only getting a bath, like that's it. Done deal. Next up drying this I was gonna say is the most important but like literally they're all three equally as important so many people dry curly coated breeds wrong and most likely it's not your fault you probably just weren't taught the right way um, because so many people screw this up like so many people okay when you're drying your curly coat dogs, your poodles and bichons is mostly what I'm referring to, you want to blast them with that force dryer just enough 
to get the heavy water off them, okay? You know what I mean? Like when you kind of hit them with the dryer and you like that water kind of comes off and you can see it. You don't want to f like fully force dry them all the way. There's a couple ways you can go about it actually. So you can and you can't. I'll explain both. If you fully, if you don't fully force dry them and you just kind of leave it to where they're still damp, you're going to go from force dryer to heated stand dryer or a hand dryer. Okay. And if you haven't used a heated stand dryer before, this is probably your number one issue when prepping and grooming your curly coated dogs because it makes the biggest difference. You need some kind of heated dryer, okay? It doesn't have to be the stand dryer. Sometimes I use a hand dryer like, like you would use for your own hair, depends on how I'm feeling. You need that hair dryer on heat and you need that on heat while you have a brush in your other hand and you're brushing and the heat is blowing in the same spot. And so that's why I was saying if you don't force dry it all the way, you still want that to be damp because you don't want to brush dry coat. Brushing dry coat breaks the coat. And when you break the coat, it looks all dingy, which can affect your overall outcome. So we're only brushing damp coat which is what you still had it damp because you didn't force dry it all the way. You're using your heated dryer, either the stand dryer, the way you can like brush and hold with both hands, um, or you're holding your hair dryer and brushing, okay? The other way you want to go about it is you can force dry all the way until they're completely dry, which sometimes I do this too, and then you're going to then like mist them down with some kind of brushing spray or whatever i use the hydra ultra dew matting and finishing spray this is my brushing spray love that stuff and i will mist my whole dog down and then bust out my heated dryer and brush and heat with my dryer all at the same time but this you have to use like some kind of spray because you don't want to brush dry coat so that's where the spray comes in um the reason you're brushing while you're drying is to pull that curly little hair down at the very roots as straight as you can get it. And it stretches the coat, which is why you have the heat. So you're heating and brushing at the same time. Like that is the key goal here, all right? Sometimes it's really hard if the dog doesn't tolerate it. That's why the stand dryers are nice. They kind of are there and you don't have to touch them. They just blow air down and you just hold the dog and brush in that spot. Um, I lied. There's also a third way you can do it. If your dog will sit there that long and you're fast enough, you can just dry them with the stand dryer. You don't even need to use the force dryer. As long as the stand dryer has heat, you can literally just have the stand dryer blowing on them in one area while you're brushing through the whole dog that simple so i talked about brushing and drying pretty much in the same group because you have to do those things together you have to brush while you have a heated dryer if you want to get that coat straight and crisp as possible okay but let's move on to once you're finished with that to combing okay Combing is just as important as brushing. You don't need to rebrush the dog because you just brushed it while you were drying, which is called fluff drying, by the way. If you didn't know that, look fluff drying up, watch some videos. You need to know what that is. Then you want to comb your dog. And this is where I have several different combs. And I think I have been requested to do a comb video because I keep getting asked, like, why do you have so many combs? What are they for? Da -da -da -da. And I do see a lot of people that groom and they only have like one or two combs. I could never. Um, combs are so important, okay? They each are made for different purposes. I have what I call my poodle comb, which is like my big gray stainless steel one. It's really heavy duty. It has the teeth that are really far apart. And that's what I go for first. So I've finished drying, finished brushing, cause that's at the same time. Now I'm gonna comb through my dog. And this comb is to get tangles out, okay? You're combing through, getting tangles out, combing through your whole dog. Then I go to a smaller comb for smaller tangles. Combing through 
everything, kind of fluffing it a little bit as I go. Then I go to a smaller comb, which is just for fluffing, okay? And this is one of my Itsumi ones, and I am literally just fluffing the coat. This is before I have groomed it. I haven't touched it with scissors. I have already used three different combs on this dog, okay? My standard poodle comb, that is what I call it. A One of my larger finishing combs, then a smaller fluffing finishing comb to fluff everything up. I'm looking at my dog. So these combs, these last two combs are not for getting tangles out. The first two combs are for getting tangles out. The last two are not. Uh, yep, yeah, we're using four combs. It's very important actually. <laughs> so you're fluffing and fluffing and fluffing and you fluffed your whole dog. Now you're ready to groom your dog, okay? And that's where I just got the brand new um, Utsubi comb, the one with the pink line through it, which is phenomenal. I was only using three combs before, so that one I was just talking about would have been my final finish and fluffing comb. But now that I have this one, I now have a four step process. And my fourth comb has a rubber little I don't even know what you wouldn't call it. Little line down the middle of the teeth in the Utsumi comb. So as I am grooming, you always wanna like comb up, scissor down, comb up, scissor down. So as I'm fluffing up and I'm scissoring the other way, I, this comb like, the rubber on it literally just grabs every ounce of hair on my dog and fluffs it up to perfection. And that's why that's my final fluffing scissoring comb. And then like for the head and like uh, like random things, I might go back to comb number three. And I know it would be helpful if I had them to show you, but I'm not at work. I will do a comb video though, um, because I feel like people just don't know the different purposes of these combs. But that is my process on how to prep your curly coated dogs for grooming okay because you cannot make an even haircut if your dog is still curly you can never ever ever never on the face of the planet do you kennel dry a curly coated dog like don't take this out of context, okay? You know, like, if it's an elderly dog and it's, like, dying and you can't stress it out and you're, you don't want to dry it, obviously, okay, you're in comfort mode, sure. But literally, I do not have a single curly-coated dog that gives, goes in the kennel dryer or cage dryer or whatever. It's an absolute no because you can't, you just can't, like, it's not possible. Like, those dogs are not dogs that you can bathe, throw in the kennel dryer, bathe another one, throw, come back to it. No, you cannot. You have to hand dry that dog start to finish if you want your grooms to come out the way that you see all these other people's come out. It's just like, yeah, literally you cannot. So some of the main things in this is no conditioner, no kennel dryer, cage dryer. Um... And combs, 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 combs. Combs are so important. So that's the real quick tea on what you're doing wrong with your curly coated dogs. So, no conditioner, bathe with a um, clarifying shampoo. You need to brush as you dry with a heated dryer for the love of curly coated breeds please like and i'm not the best of this okay like i am not that's like a fine art to brush and dry and all these things at the same time and so i can definitely improve in that i'm no means perfect in this whole process but some of you all just don't even know the process so i'm just here to share the tea but as always follow me on instagram and I will post updates on there when I am posting new videos. I've got um, a couple exciting ones very soon. I'm going to a seminar this weekend and I'll be videoing that for you all, vlog style. So make sure you check that out. Um, and as always, subscribe because 
I appreciate it. We'll do a comb video. Um. Yeah, that needs to happen. All right. Until next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>